What up, what up, my Timmies? Shannon here from the Trinosphere, where Timmy, Johnny, and Spike battle over all things EDH. Coming at you with a deck tech for Aurelia Exemplar of Beats. You can see me play Aurelia against my co-hosts on our up-and-coming Battle of the Guilds of Ravnica. My other co-hosts will be playing the Trad of the Silencer, Azoni Thousand-Eyed, and Lazav the Multifarious. So be sure to check that video out when it comes out Tuesday. Without further ado, let's dive into the list and see what we got going on. So Aurelia is a 4-mana 2-5 flyer with Mentor and a combat triggered ability that gives our creatures play a single creature plus 2 plus 0. Oh, and if that creature is red, it gets Trample. If it's white, it gets Vigilance. So right off the bat, we see there's two different ways we can go about building uh, Aurelia. There is a combat triggered uh, uh, build and then there's a plus 1 plus 1 counter build. I'm going to lean more towards the, the former, the, the additional combat triggers, rather than the plus one, plus one counter build, but I'm sure there's a perfectly good build out there somewhere. I do have a little bit of spice left over from theory crafting that second one, though. So let's take a look at our beaters, the creatures that we're going to want to be buffing with Aurelia when we attack. We have Boros Reckoner, a classic Boros creature. 3-3 uh, three, three, that when it takes damage, you get to deal damage again to something else. So this guy becomes a 5-3 double, or 5-3 Trample Vigilant, that when he receives damage, he deals that much damage when Aurelia is out. We got Godo Bandit Warlord in here for fetching up equipment, including a spicy, spicy Helm of the Hose for infinite attack steps. Then we got Aroas' Champion. This is, a, this is a perfect example of what we're looking for here. A 3 mana 2-2 two, two Double Strike. When, a, when Aurelia is out, this becomes a 4-2 four, a four, Double Strike Vigilant Trample for 3 mana. That is brutal. We got Calamity, the bigger brother of Aroas' champion. Uh, it's the disciple of Aroas. And she's a 4-mana 3-3 three, three double strike vision. She may already have Vigilance, but she gets that Trample, becoming a 5-3 when Aurelia is out. This one can also grow to be a bit bigger, but that's not really a big focus of our deck because this is perfectly fine as is. We've got Skylight ne Legionnaire, Sky Knight Legionnaire, 3-mana 2-2 two, two Flying Haste, becoming a... a a three mana, four two, flying trampled haste vigilant. When it really is out, Jesus, that's gonna catch some people off guard, destroying planeswalkers out of nowhere and just dealing a ton of damage that no one expects. We got Sun Titan here, his ability to recur a lot of these other creatures. Uh, he's just in here as a way to reanimate some creatures after they get board wiped because they're gonna have to board wipe us a lot. We got Sl Swift Blade Vindicator. He already has most of the abilities that we're looking for. He's already got his vigilance and his trample. He has his double strike, so we're just going to be giving him plus two, plus zero oh from Aurelia. But we have plenty of other ways to buff this guy if Aurelia is off the board. So we're not going to look down this guy and say he, he's not a perfect fit here. So with all these beaters, we're going to have, want to have extra attack steps. So we're going to look at our extra attack step package. We have in that package Aggravated Assault, which allows us to pay five. It's an enchantment. It allows us to pay five mana and get another attack step. And in that, along with Hellkite Charger, who when it attacks, you can pay 7 mana to get another attack step. Combo with Sword of Feast and Famine, which then taps all of our lands whenever we hit. So if we're able to hit them, and we have, can produce more than 7 or more mana from our, from our land situation, we basically just have an infinite number of attack steps at that point. We have the OG Aurelia, the War Leader, a 3-4 Flying Vigilant Haste, and then whenever it attacks for the first time a turn, you get an extra attack. It's crazy. This is, this is crazy. It's crazy that both of them can be in this deck. We got Combat Celebrant, which along with Godo, the Bandit Warlord, can be can be paired with Helm of the Host to have an infinite number of attack steps. We got Response and Resurgence, the new one of the new cards, one of the new split cards. Response slash Resurgence, Response to Insurgence, Response or in I, I don't know. Anyways, this thing does five damage to an attacking or blocking creature, but the other side is another way to get more attacks. Then we got Ways of Aggression to round out our package. This is a Relentless Assault that has Retrace. You can just discard a land and have another attack step. Another way to just go completely ham in a single turn and obliterate people. So after that, let's look at some of the ways that we're going to buff our attack steps to get some extra damage in and completely catch people off guard. We got Agress Cost Wojek Veteran, who when he attacks, he buffs red creatures by two on the front end and white creatures by two on the back end. Perfectly good Anthem effect. We got Anger, who, uh, who we obviously want in our graveyard to give our boys haste, but if, if, they, don't, if they don't want to kill this guy and, and Aurelia is out, this is, this is a 4-2 haste trample that they're just going to keep hitting them. 
until they kill it. So this is going to be much harder for them to deal with than anger normally is when it really is around. We've got Bruce Tarl able to give some of our guys who don't have double strike that sweet DS, along with lifelink. So this is going to gain us a ton of life. I love Bruce Tarl, one of my favorite partners. We got Cathar's Crusade, a card I normally do not run unless I'm making more than two or three creatures a turn, but this has a, a sweet synergy with a, a left, a holdover from a plus one, plus one counter build I worked on, and that is the Cauldron of Souls. That gives all of our creature, creatures persist, so when they die, they come back with a negative one, negative one counter on them, and then if Cathar's Crusade is in play, it just strips all those counters away and buffs all of them back up to, to full form, so... This, with this two, these two cards working in synergy, uh, th that allows us to have effective indestructibility. Uh, of course, Cauldron of Souls does combo well with her Mentor ability as well. Beyond Cathars, we see we have Conqueror's Flail that prevents them from just casting spells during our turn to stop our beats, uh, especially from our hasting creatures. They, they just don't have any chance to interact. They can, they can interact when we go to equip, but once we're already equipped, we can cast hasting creatures for free and they just can't do anything about it. And also, most of our creatures being Boros colored, this will give us a plus two, plus two, which is kind of nice. We got Helm of the Host, which we talked about works well with tons of cards in here. Goes infinite with Godo and Combat Celebrant. Uh, also really great for having multiple Aurelias, LOL. We got Hero of the Blade Hold, who triggers on combat, on, on attacking, giving our boys plus one, plus zero, oh, and also generating extra attackers. So once we have multiple attack steps, this guy's gonna create armies out of nowhere. Or this gal, I should say. Aroas, God of Victory, needs no introduction. His addition of menace and preventing damage to us when we attack allows us to swing into boards of, of humongous size without any fear uh, uh, of not coming out having dealt a shit ton of damage. All right, got Ogre Battle Driver, another way to give our guys haste, an additional plus two plus so. So we've got double strikers coming in with haste and plus two plus so. That's going to be bursts of damage that nobody can really deal with. Silverblade Paladin, another one, along with uh, Bruce Tarl, able to pair with other creatures to give them double strike, uh, as well as giving itself double strike. Sunforger, it wouldn't be a Boros deck if we didn't have Sunforger. A way to go get uh, removal at instant speed just to threaten people. But good gosh, putting plus four plus on a double strike creature, and then that creature getting trampled, this is going to murder people straight up. It's ridiculous. And you got Sword of Feast of Damage, we talked about combos with Aggravated Assault and Hellkite Charger. Also just really good with double strike creatures, right? Like, we're going to get multiple discard triggers on our opponents, multiple untapped triggers on ourselves. That seems like pretty sweet with double strike. From there, let's move on to our removal package, get into our, our less exciting, more, more uh, uh, streamlined stuff you see all the time. We're going to be running Blasphemous Act in this deck as opposed to Day of Judgment and Wrath of God because... That works mu much better with Aroas' uh, ability to, get, to prevent all damage that is dealt to our attacking creatures. We got Chaos Warp uh, in here, you know, classic removal along with Condemn. We're going to be using Condemn in this deck. I don't usually run Condemn, but I know that I'm going to have being attacked by very specific and powerful creatures like Atrata and Lazav, uh, single attack. So we can, we can use that one to our advantage to prevent us from losing the game to certain situations. Flintstone Kavu, I don't usually run this guy, although uh, he's not bad by any means, but in this deck in particular, we're going to want to have a body left behind in addition to our removal, so that we can then plus two, plus so, and trample this thing with Aurelia. we got Forsake the World, leaving able to exile artifacts and enchantments. This is a, this is a solid removal spell, one of my favorite. A Manic Vandal, get another, sh another Shatter uh, that leaves a body behind so that we can plus two, plus so, and trample over our opponents. Pad to Exile. Sell the wreckage in here. To, to, goes really well with Sunforger. Able to, to activate Sunforger, exile all attackers. Uh, and then we got Swords to Plowshares, Tragic Arrogance, and Wear and Tear. So let's move on to our protection package. This is what we're going to be using to protect ourselves and our creatures uh, from our, our meta specific matchups. So we have Boros Charm, uh, able to give our creatures indestructible, great against board wipes. But it also can give a creature double strike if we need another source, another way to get a double strike in there. Cauldron of Souls, like I talked about before, goes really well with Cathars Crusade or Mentor, able to give our creatures effectively indestructible. They'll die, but they'll come back, and then they'll be able to die again as soon as Cauldron of Souls untaps. Citadel Siege is a meta-specific one. I know that I'm coming up against a couple of decks that are going to be using a single powerful attacker. So this, is, this allows me to negotiate uh, the attack steps and... and, and and, and the flow of the game by threatening to tap down their Lazav or their Atrata if they're going to come at me. 
Frontline Medic gives our guys indestructible when we attack in, in, in waves. It also gives us the ability to, to counter an X-Spell, but that's less relevant than the fact that this will be a Vigilant 3-3 uh, three, three that gives indestructible when we swing. Another way for us to just blindly go sideways at people, not even worrying about the outcome. We got Maze of Ith, which along with, with Citadel Siege allows us to threaten the Atrata and Lazav player into, into, uh, into submission. We got Teferi's Protection, which can allow us to exile our board in case of emergency too. So from there, we'll move on to our Draw and Tutor package, which is a, is a tough package to put together in Boros. So we're going to be running Bygone Bishop, which works well with a lot of our smaller, double-striking, two-powered creatures. Imperial Recruiter, along with Recruiter the Guard, allows us to fetch specific things like Combat, Celebrant, Anger, some of these other uh, creatures that are a little more utilitarian. We got uh, Mask of Memory, which would double-strike when we hit people, we can draw extra cards. Sounds good to me. Mentor of the Meek, along with Bygone, great with our smaller sized creatures. We've got Prophetic Flame Speaker in here, a card that I never have been able to play. I always wanted to, and this seems like the perfect deck for it. It's a double strike trample, 1 3. Whenever it hits a player, we exile the top card of our library, and we can play that card this turn. So with double strike, sometimes that's two cards, and especially with Aurelia's plus 2, plus 0 in trample, a 3 3 trample double strike that pseudo draws us cards seems perfect for what we're looking for. We have Sensei's Divining Top helping us to filter through some of our bad draws. We have Immortal Sun. Haven't played this card in a deck, but we don't have any Planeswalkers. We want plus one, plus one to our creatures. We want our spells to cost one less, and we want to draw extra cards. This card seems perfect for this deck when we have less options for drawing extra cards. Vance's Blasting Cannon, yet another, another way to get an extra draw, the red Phyrexian Arena. And of course, Wheel of Fortune, great for, for when we completely dump our hands on the battlefield we can use this to refill our grip beyond those draw sources we have a few lands that can that can double for that kind of thing we have arch of Arazka, which we can use to draw a card if we have the city's blessing uh we've got uh what else do we got we have mikakoro center of the sea which allows everyone to draw a card but you know you got to do what you got to do in boros you got throne of the high city which can give us uh the monarch if we need to in a pinch too then beyond that, for our, our techier lands, we got Slayer Stronghold, of course. I mean, that was, that was a shoe in But we also got to run Needle Spires. I'm always down on man lands, but this is a 2-1 double striker when you activate, right? Well, with Aurelia, this is a 4-2 double strike trample vigilant when we activate that. It seems, uh, seems like it's uh, not as bad as I uh, remember it being. In addition, we have Flamekin Village able to give us haste uh, to our creatures. Another, another additional way to give haste. Then for some other utility lands, we have, a, we have a good amount of cycling lands in here too because I'm always paranoid I can't draw enough cards in Boros. And then we have Scavenger Grounds able to exile people's graveyards. This, is, this card should be in every EDH deck as a way to get rid of... It's the colorless bajuka bog, I guess you could say. And then beyond that, we have our general Boros land package. So uh, that kind of rounds out the Aurelia concept. The concept is extra attack steps, extra triggers for Aurelia, other cards that trigger on combat or attack can trigger multiple times per turn. We're going to hit them with double strike, we're going to hit them with buffs, and we're going to hit them hard and fast, and they're not going to see this shit coming. So if you like this deck tech, and you want to see more deck techs, or you want to tune in for our gameplay, be sure to like and subscribe uh, down below. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I missed anything, and let me know if you're going to try and build Aurelia. While I was building this deck, it definitely became apparent that there's a separate, different, really cool Tajik deck that I'm really interested in building after this one. Let me know if you guys have already been working on that. All right, guys, uh, that wraps it up for the deck tech. So I will show you uh, where you can be checking out some more of our content. You know, we're on Facebook talking about spoilers all the time. You can follow us on Twitter so you know when our new stuff comes out. But more importantly, you can go to our YouTube channel and watch those gameplay videos of the past. We had, some, we had a pretty cool one last week. We did a throwback of, of old Guilds of, or old Ravnican Commanders, but uh, uh, you can also see uh, uh, us on, on Twitch when we're streaming different kinds of gameplay, whether it be Drinking Magic, EDH Night, and all that kind of stuff. All right, guys, this is Timmy from the Trinosphere signing off. So as always, remember, it's not about winning. It's about sending a message.